we I have to do less part of convincing whether DPI is needed. I think if you are here in this room and still not convinced, we have a bigger problem. I think. Yeah. So, but that's not the case anymore. So, the, just to recap, though, it is a lot of times we do mix up DPI and general digitization. And DPI is not just digitizing it, it has two essential aspects of it. One, it creates reuse, tremendous reuse, whether it's data reuse, APIs or services reuse, policy reuse, anything reuse, 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 reuse. Okay, remember, because many of the systems today are in silo. They do it again and again and again. There's a huge cost and effort, and hence the time taken in terms of not being able to reuse. So if you look at as much of what we have done, and morning discussions or other or UPI, which you have heard that in the morning, is about creating that underlying reuse of what we call digital rails, or reusable building blocks. But that's not enough. That's the first part, reuse. Second part is market innovation. There is no way we can bring, especially for a country like India, diversity and scale is enormous. And without the market participation, we cannot create sustainable innovations. That's where the solutioning happens. So when solutioning happens, it's not about government writing all the solutions for all the problems that we are seeing. It's about market having the ability to build, innovate solutions it's faster and cheaper using this infrastructure. So re you create reuse, create the impediment policies, and actually allow the market to innovate. And that's the essence of these three layers of DPI. And so if you, if you, anytime you see somebody talking DPI, ask this question. What do you have for reuse? And do you have market innovation? Market doesn't mean private. It can be NGOs, it can be public innovation. That means one department innovating on another. For example, you could have a, you know, a government department doing direct benefits transfer using an identity service offered by an identity authority. It's a completely reusable building block. Nothing wrong about it. So it doesn't mean only private. I said public and private innovations are not, right? But it's also important, as we implement though, we are convinced we want to do DPI, we start seeing how do I do it? Can I do it faster? Because countries definitely need to do this right now. To in, in, in 2023, we have to be able to do. And that necessitates an ecosystem way of thinking. Both supply side, that means as we build the DPI, we need ecosystems, system integrators, open source, cloud providers, consulting environments, training, certification, all that thing, capacity building. So we need ecosystem to drive supply side. But that's only one part. We can actually reduce the need for supply side by packaging and packaging and packaging. But we need ecosystem on the demand side. That means startups, innovators, device builders, for example, who will stick QR codes on the ground when UPI comes out. It's not about National Payment Corporation of India just building the rail. It's like building the road but nobody to drive. Right? We need definitely be able to create demand side. That is an ongoing thing, actually. So countries and all of you working in that must consciously think about energizing, creating, incentivizing. And that's also where private ecosystem can play. Startup accelerators, funding, uh, you know, cloud credits, cloud guys do it. And there are many pieces of the puzzle. Not one agency can solve it. You have to bring the entire ecosystem together. So that's a DPI way of thinking as well. But we continue to see scaling DPI as a huge friction. And it's, it's because it's, it's somewhat new and government has a way of doing things and the current way of doing things actually takes longer because they are answerable to public and it's taxpayers' money and so they need to go through what they need to go through. And if you really look at it and the friction between the need and the speed continue to be the real friction that we are trying to target. Citizens want it now. They want, and you'll be surprised. And we have had this famous 
discussions about how are poor people going to do digital payments and all that thing. And you will see right, literally three years, four years later, the poorest of the lot actually is starting to embrace it even faster than the richer people because we have no, we have cards and lounge access and everything else, so we don't need problem. Right? But it's amazing when the value get unlocked, people rush to it and people find a way to learn and use because it changes their life. So the need is very, very, very high. But the speed of that uh, ecosystem has continued, and right? the processes and so on. And if you really look at it, and this is not a bug, it's a feature of the system. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Remember, this is how stuff gets done. You know, you have to decide, you have to select, you have to, by, by the way, when a government last uh, doing start large projects, you have to select an agency to write the next RFP. I mean, so you have to do multiple layers of selections and RFP writing and decision. And a lot of these are what, you know, at least technologists call it a waterfall method. That means you have to upfront decide everything and spend money. Imagine all possibility for the next five years. And that's hard because everything, you know, last year chat GPT didn't exist. Think about it. So things change very fast. So if you ask a government officer, make sure you decide everything upfront. All the requirements that you can ever imagine in life, you have to put it down because otherwise vendor won't do it. It's very hard. It's unfair. It is not going to happen. So that's what is causing this selection, long delays in selection, multiple rounds in RFP, and most importantly, definition of what am I supposed to build? How do I know what I'm building is correct? How do I know it's going to be secure? How do I know it's going to be usable in the future? Not in the past, right? Because we don't know the future. And then again, procure hardware, software, capacity, teams, recruit. And by the time you get to then start coding, then start building, and you eventually everyone is waiting. Politicians might have moved on, secretaries will move on, and everybody will move on. Eventually, it gets very, very hard to roll out. So it's a large complex. This is it in private industry as well. You have seen this in the 90s, when you have large enterprise IT projects that goes three years long. We don't do that anymore. But then we wonder why government keeps doing this, right? So we can also improve that, actually. That's a question. And we can't even get to the pilot. So the question is, is there an alternative? And the real, it's an obvious thing. When you look at it, time is huge, long, what you call gestation period, before a first person can actually benefit. And then the cost thereof, and the cost of time, cost of opportunity, cost of capex up front, you have to spend all the money up front. And then capacity, because if you are doing such a long and complex project, you need even more capable teams. Think about it. If everything is packaged, you don't need. It's like, you know, if you, if you can buy a car instead of build a car from scratch, you don't need that much capacity. You can just buy and drive. So it's a, every time you have seen this working out very well, capacity is directly proportional to the complexity, right? And the risk thereof, because two years is too long for technology and changes that is coming. So is there an alternate? Right? And alternative is really to address a really a custom built everything I will do from scratch and then I will get teams and I will host everything from that sort of mental model. Can we look at something else? And the best part is that, and this we see it in all the, in fact, people ask, how does UPI scale? How does others built? How does some of these DPIs are built? Entirely built on open source. UPI today runs 11.5 billion transactions every month, plus five times API calls on top of that. Entirely on of, so it's not that we are not used to doing this. But how can government also embrace these constructs that private companies or private uh, enterprises already do and compress that? Can I compress the first part significantly? You by using best-in-class products, we always do it. Nobody buys everything from that. But in the case of a digital public infrastructure, question of sovereignty, question of control comes in. Because the infrastructure cannot be hostaged and taken over by private players. It gets very hard to undo. Also, you have to look at open source as a means, at least for the infrastructure. Solution can be all private. Like phone pay on top of UPR in India is no big deal. Phone pay is private, UPI is public rates. Public rates. So you can actually create. So, but what if you reuse, again, think about that word, reuse best-in-class open source intellectual property that is already out there, 
proven for you to be able to accelerate that. Then the question is, can I compress the next part? Why should I take it open source, have a large army, customize it, run it, put my own security, and even after all, I think I don't know whether I'm getting it right. Why don't I compress that by deploying it, making it available, literally how I be subscribed to emails or anything else? It doesn't have to be that extreme. It's okay. I'm, I'm purposely pushing your thinking towards that. It's about a cloud deployed, a pre-tested, in best-in-class security tested, and ready to use, ready to use. Could a model like that work? And this is what ecosystems do. So if you really embrace the ecosystem strategy, and if you really uh, embrace the reuse strategy, you would naturally come into this model. There is nothing wrong. And is government use, can government today's procurement models work it? Government today procure product. Nothing wrong. Today government can procure Red Hat, Red Hat Linux, for example. Nothing wrong. They buy. They buy Microsoft Office. Of course they buy. No big deal. So product buying is not new. So can we play best of all that thing to get DPI rapid? Better DPI, faster and cheaper, so that the citizens start unlocking value. And that's a comp between the need and the speed that we are doing. And skip that part, it's obvious, we compress, dramatically compress the timeline. And it's not everything about compression of timeline using technology. And that's what you hear this consistently, right? And so the benefits are tremendous. And if you have come so far with me, it's obvious to you. You get the benefits. Significantly faster rollout, less costly due to time from and cost of time, cost of capacity and people, everything else, right? Ownership of IP remains with the country because it's open source. You're using best of open source core engine. The intellectual property remain, and it's your cloud instance. Cloud doesn't mean public cloud. It can be public cloud, it can be private cloud, it can be in-country cloud. I meant cloud technologies. Okay, by means, what does cloud technology allow you? It allows you to go really fast and use it. Okay, it's extremely programmable environment. Not everything you have to screw up, you know, screw and wire and everything else yourself. It's like leasable compute and leasable storage, right? This is really what's happening. And it is possible. Significantly reduced tech capacity. Look at this. Supply side capacity gets reduced dramatically because you package everything. Demand side, you need startups, you need innovators, you need, that's where you have to focus. Because they are the people who will unlock value for the citizen. You should not be taking three years to build something, but actually nobody's using it. That's a complete waste of time, right? To do something like that. So and ability, most importantly, ability to shift from CapEx model to OpEx is brilliant. If you don't know really fully whether you want to bet the risk, you can actually OpEx if I. And you can actually go, you say, per citizen, I want to try. 10% of my citizens, I actually want to roll it out and see whether it's actually true. Right? So, and you know, somewhat obvious, and the best part is that if you use best-in-class technology, you get portability. And we've proven this repeatedly. It's actually possible, right? And achieve scale and disk, and most important, there is political changes, bureaucratic changes, technology changes, you know, what the, the rest of the uh, environmental changes that you're going to right? So at least you can do that. And it's been done before. People ask this question: then Why is it not obvious? It's no different from asking why was the internet not, you know, built in 1920s. And there's always time for it. And we believe much of this is not new. Byproducts not new. Cloud not new. Private clouds not new. Subscriptions not new. DPI not new. Open source not new. So what's the problem putting it together? For getting DPI fast? I think it's possible. Absolutely possible. So it's like building a completely new house from all from scratch or moving into your house. You can own the house, but you can actually move it. It's pretty straightforward. I think it works very, very well. And the idea was to put this together. Thanks, folks, to you know bring this idea. We are engaging a community, participate in the community to refine and finesse this so that countries can actually get on. Thanks.